Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial video on um, I'm going to be looking at the machine Poison, the hack the box machine called Poison. Done a quick nmap scan on the IP address 10.10.10.84 10, and found two ports open SSH on 22 and Apache HTTP running on port 80 and appears the machine is a free BSD machine uh, running PHP Apache. So quick look on port 80, so we can do 10, 10, 10 I'm presented with this page where it says um, temporary website to test local PHP scripts. So we can put PHP info.php, click on submit, and did anything go wrong there? Maybe there's a space, click on submit. Yeah, and then we can see the PHP info of this box. After a lot of enumeration around, if we, if we look at this, let's click and submit again. We can see browse.php and then the, the query for the search in the file actually appears. So after our search, I uh, was able to find our browse. Browse PHP exploits database. And as a directory transversal exploit that was disclosed in 2016 regarding this vulnerable application, saying you can actually even read vulnerable to um, directory path transversal, allows an attacker to access files in directory are stored outside the root folder. So we can see here, I might be able to read the password file. So let's just type that in etc dash pass wd, click on submit, and we're presented with a file, uh, with the password, content of the password file. So we can see here, we've got a user called Charix, home Charix bin ch. Um, we might see if we can read a shadow file. No, no response. Uh, one thing we might try to do again is to go to that directory, home Charix, and try to see if for any SSH keys we could use to log in via SSH. SSH and uh, the user's role will be ID underscore RSA. And we get permission denied or probably the file doesn't exist. So we know we have a user called Charix. So let's enumerate more. List files PHP. Copy that in. Paste. Submit. And we can see an array. There's an interesting file here called PWD Backup TXT. So I had a quick look at that one, see maybe there's some juicy information. And we get this uh, base64 encoding saying the password is secure is encoded 13 times. So all I did was to copy this into a text file and make sure everything was neat and tidy. Copy that out and try to decode it. We could probably do this probably by writing a script to de decode these 13 times, but I've just been lazy and um, just did a Google search for Space64 decoder encoder, and that's the side there. And just copy that, pasted that into this, and within some few seconds, should be able to decode. So decode this way, decode that way, decode this way, decode that way, about 13 times. And we get the password for the user Charix. So copy that and do SSH Charix at 10.10.10.84. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm just going to open another. Yeah, so we got that here. Click on paste. And then we got a prompt as the user Charix, so we can clear screen. I think I'll put another shell here. So I'm just going to see the ADB, see the poison, and then password dot txt. OK, 
just use nano paste that in and just save that for later so if we enumerate here we got um, I don't know probably some people are also on this box put in this but originally we should have just these two files so we have secret zip and user.txt so do a list long list we can see this file belongs to root and also this user file belongs to you and the user the group user called Chavis can actually read both files so we could do wc's the c user the txt and we get the 33 characters of the um, user flag so we have to then go on to um, privilege escalation on this box so this file was quite interesting so what I did was to transfer this file onto my machine, try to unzip it there because it actually asked for a password. So a quick way to transfer a file because you could use netcat, so I can see which netcat, netcat is installed. And I do nc the genv 10, the 10 IP address of my machine, I think it's 15, 153, I think. See if I'm right. Look if config I'm zero. Yeah, one four three. So one four three on port eighty, and I'm going to send this file secret. Dot zip, and on my box. Listen. And the LP eighty the content of the file secret the zip. So listening on there, go on here and send it. I guess succeeded. Okay, so we get succeeded. Just gonna give you a bit of time and this long list. We can see the secret zip file got 166 bytes, which is consistent with this 166 byte. Should have reverted this box probably before. So because the two files if you uh, is actually user txt and zip. So I tried to unzip this. Secret to zip. Transfer a password. I supplied a password we decoded earlier on, paste, and then list. We got a file secret. And says is a non ISO extended ASCII file. Try to cut the file and some weird characters on the file. So we're just going to keep that for later. So on here we can go on to enumerate. So what I did was to do a PSOX to look at the services actually running on this box. So one thing that was clear here was we have root user running XVNC on channel one. On the via desktop, the user is actually using VNC to remotely connect to this box. So we can, you know, you can do a search about XVNC, and you can see XVNC Tiger VNC. Um, it's a virtual screen rather than a physical one, which you could a user could use to connect remotely to the. To a machine and we got options on different parameters you can use in order to to access um, VNC server so we can see here we've got RF bot password file and that give a hint on the file we found might actually be a password file for XVNC so if you look at blog here or this uh, manual it says default 5800 Sometimes we also have default on 5900. So we clear screen, so list, got our secret file. We could do XVNC. So that should I help? You can see the flags and parameters we can use. So I do XVNC. What secret? And it says um, listening on 
TCP port 5900. So we can try to connect using VNC viewer. So I can do VNC viewer. Help. Get the flags and we can see it's asking also for the password file. So I do VNC viewer password. Try to connect to the machine on 10 10 10 10 dot. 84 on port 5900. So part of password file secret. And we get this window to the user poison and it's not actually quite clear to use a charic sorry on desktop running on zero. Or if we go back to the results of our enumeration here. PS aux and have a look again. You can see XVNC for the for, for the user roots. So let me just do PS aux grep root. And we can see the user root is actually on channel one. So how can we then connect to channel one? So if we do the same thing we did before, XVNC, um, auth file, secret, and we go on here and try to connect to the user on channel one. So we get connection refused, unable to connect to the server. On here, I think we could do desktop um, one and it's still saying we connected on 500 see if we try to connect here it says refused so I'm trying to see if we can open up here so xvnc dash auth authentication file secret think we have to do channel one. Yeah, on the same server, it's a factor server is already active on display one. So there's already a user using display one. And that's why we can't start it because it's already started. And that's what this is complaining. So after a lot of enumeration, um, I say, okay, it's probably we could tunnel through that, um, through that port 5901. So you could, you know, do a quick search and you could do a quick search on Google, quick tip on SSH tunnel made easy. And I found this very interesting um, detail on how uh, SSA tunneling works. So you can have a read of it. So the command we're going to do here is, so the F tells SSA to go into background. And so we're not going to be using the F flag. So port 2000 is the, on our local port on our local server. And this is the port of the of the machine we're trying to 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 tunnel through. And then it says finally N instructs open SSH not to execute. So this is the the command we're going to be using. Now we're not going to be using the N flag or the F flag. So we exit away from here. Um, clear screen here as well. So I do a list to cat my password file. TXT. Okay, so we've got the password, and then we're going to try to tunnel through here. So, um, so we do SSH user charix at ten dot ten dot ten dot eighty four. Um, so the L flag. L, and we want to listen on our own local port 5800. So we give our local port 5800, local host, and um, we want to tunnel through to this port 5900 because this is where root user is listening, but Charis is listening on 5900, the default one. So we could click on enter there. We should get a prompt to supply the password.
yeah so we can go in here now and click on enter good list we still got a secret file a lot of people on this box are trying different kind of stuff but we still got a secret file and hopefully that's the file and then we could do xvnc x vnc and supply the odd flag secret and then we go in here so we start that there so listening on five nine hundred and then we could go in here and do vnc viewer so everything is right Local host five eight hundred. Then we supply the pass word secret think. Anything coming up? Not sure. Probably I got a I got an error with my command there. I have to try that again. Nothing seems to be happening. Connection closed. So I think the SSH lost the SSH connection there. Okay. So I'll change this to five nine hundred. Try that again. Connection fees so probably the burks have been reverted. So I'm just gonna wait to see if the box is gonna come back online. Hack the box could be a pain sometimes, um, you know, when other people on the box gets reverted, probably while you're working or trying to do something. So I get the password here again, so put that in. And then I just run that command again, but I'm not sure I have my file now, so that might be an issue. So list, the file's gone. So like I mentioned originally, this is what needs to be there. So we could have to start our Python HTTP server again. there w get http transfer the file 10 10 15 143 slash secret for the file okay we could kill that clear screen and run our command xvnc Dash art secret and hopefully if we run this now on port 5900 because I chained that in get a connection and we root okay so SSL tunneling we root do ID you can see we root on desktop we have the list you can see the root flag and we can do WCC root.txt and that's it, got the number of characters in the in the root flag. So that's it. So SSA tunneling enabled us to be able to, um, to be able to connect for the port and connect on uh, as the user root. So you can see here he's saying desktop name root desktop one. And before what we had was desktop or Charix desktop and not root. So that completes the box. Hope you guys learned from that and thanks for watching.